On Saturday, we left it at how I was shocked by a strange answer Jesus gave to a question that I had not asked him. Now that I had gone to meet him in order to know him better, I like any good mannered man would do, started my conversation by recognizing him as a teacher come from God. I wanted to put him at ease, that I was not there to, to cause or create any trouble, just keen on getting answers to many difficult questions his statements and actions had left me with. And I was in control until he, from nowhere, told me that I needed to, to get born again. <laughs> I, I remember thinking I had not heard him right. But the look on his face confirmed that I had heard him just right, loud and clear. The look on his face was actually that of, if you want to get anything from me, you need to first get born again. Otherwise, our conversation here will only leave you with more questions than you came with. But that was the most outrageous thing you could, you could tell a one-year-old baby, let alone a full-grown man like me. As a matter of fact, why not that it was Jesus of Nazareth I was talking to, a man who had done many things that I could not understand or explain. <laughs> I would not have bothered talking to him another word. Oh no. I would have simply gone back home and never bothered with him again. But it was Jesus of Nazareth whom I was talking to. He is the one who had said these words to me. And I now wanted to know exactly what he meant. I quickly shot back and, and asked him to tell me how a full grown man like me could go back into his mother's womb to be born again. Then a thought crossed my mind that maybe I had spoken too fast. Because if this man had indeed turned water into wine, he could by the same power easily turn me into my fetal self and have me find myself back in my mother's womb. Uh, that thought sent chills down my spine. Uh, the thought of being born afresh by my mother and have to work my way up the social ladder all over again was not anything I would want. And as if he was reading my mind, he compassionately said to me, Nicodemus, you should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. You just need to understand that flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. In other words, there are two types of births, one by a mother to her child and another by the spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, therefore, you must be born again. For I am not talking about physical birth, but about a spiritual rebirth. If those words were meant to make me feel better, they honestly left me more confused. 
And when he saw that I was still not getting it, he added, Nicodemus, just like the wind blows wherever it pleases, you hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And with that example of how the wind blows and no one can understand its ways, my mind came awake to the fact that Jesus could have been talking to me as he would talk to someone who knew more than I knew. It was like he expected the whole issue of being born again to be something I quickly understood or something I already knew. Just like any person out there would understand and explain the unexplainable movement of wind. And I remember feeling so frustrated because he spoke such simple words that the most ignorant person on earth could understand and relate with. Yet I, Nicodemus, could not. I could clearly hear everything he was saying, but I could not get it. I vented my frustration to him and asked, how are these things you're talking about possible? 